says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him to be sin who knew no sin and made you and I the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You heard Leonard up here from... Uh, from uh, Liberia talking about righteousness and what people in their nation don't know their righteousness. Where sin consciousness, guilt, unworthiness, condemnation will hold you in captivity. He says there in verse 20 that we are his ambassadors. You know an ambassador is appointed. The day you gave your heart to Christ, no matter what your background was like, whether you're out of religious background, whatever it is, doesn't matter what your background is like, when you give your heart to Christ, that day you come into this place, this position in Him as ambassadors. And what is an ambassador is appointed. Each and every one of us is appointed to fulfill the destiny for what God has for us here on earth. We're appointed by Him. What is a, an ambassador? When he goes to another nation, everything is paid for. We are his ambassadors. He paid the full price. He did that exchange at the cross for you and I to walk in a kingdom mentality in this time here on earth. He's, he's waiting for us to move. He's not going to move. He's waiting for us to receive, us to walk in that position and that authority that he has given us to us. An ambassador, everything is paid for. When an ambassador goes to another country, he doesn't talk about himself. He talks about his prime minister or president, shares about his nation. That's what we're called to do. We're to talk about the King of Kings. We're to share the glory of Jesus Christ. We're to share that we are in the kingdom. That's our position. That's our authority. And I want us to go to Ephesians 1.3. Who we are in him, the authority that he has given unto us. Ephesians 1.3 says, Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And in Ephesians 2, 5 and 6, Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. It's not through works that we get into heaven because he loves the alcoholic, the drug addict, the man in prison. He loves all mankind. He says, by grace through faith, you've been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The day you gave your heart to Christ was you are seated in heavenly places. You were made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus by grace through faith. We don't deserve it, we don't earn it, but we're seated right at the right hand of Jesus. We're right there in heavenly places. That is our position of authority. We are seated in heavenly places by grace through faith. We need to become conscious of it here on earth. We don't need it when we get home to heaven. We need it now. Faith is always now. The word of God is always now. It's not yesterday, it's not tomorrow, it is today and it's what we walk in it. We are to occupy. We just would be occupying the city. You know, they announced over this city, there's more drugs, more ice than any other city in the nation. More alcoholism. There's more corruption. You know, the church is to occupy. We occupy the heavenlies. There's a spiritual war going on. It's not about the natural. There's a spiritual war over cities. And the church is God's army here on earth. And he wants us to bring heaven to earth. Can you imagine this, this group of people. We stand together. We start to know that faith causes prayer to work. It's by faith. You, you look back in the Old Testament. You look in Hebrews 11. Read about the testimonies of faith. God has given to us, each and every one of us, to grow in faith. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. 
We have a spirit of faith. We have a measure of faith. It's already been given to each and every one of us. But this little thing here can get us into a lot of trouble. We normally know where we are by the words of our mouth. It's a safe place of blessing. It is far above the enemy. We are to abide in him and he in us. And John 15 says that we abide in him and he in us. We are to abide steadfastly by faith in this location that he's positioned. He seated us in heavenly places. Then we cannot be touched. We're to take ownership of it. You know, you own your own land, you own your own house. That is your land. Somebody tries to come in and rob you. You take the first thing you can find and pick up and run them out. Well, he's given us the sword of the spirit, the word of God, to fight the good fight of faith. We don't fly, fight against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers are rulers of darkness. Most people think they're fighting against people. No, there's a spirit world out there. No, we need to be in prayer and the Holy Spirit show us where to love people. It's the spirit behind it. And we come against that. He's given us to whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. See, Jesus' life is in his word. Our life is in our words. Our words are to be his words. If we're walking in the spirit, our normal life is in the heavenlies. We are seated above all the powers of the air. And they are in subjection to us as our faith learns to use the name and the authority of Jesus. We are to abide closely in Jesus and exercise our authority. And I'll read that again out of Ephesians 2.6, that he has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, and that in the ages to come he might show exceedingly riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. By grace through faith, we're saved. By grace through faith, we're seated in heavenly places. By grace through faith, we're made righteous. By grace through faith, we're healed before we feel him. By grace through faith, everything is given to us that was paid in full. We just had Easter a couple of weeks ago. And you think about Easter, what he did. Went down into hell for three days and three nights. He paid the price for all mankind to come into the kingdom through our, his name, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Attacks come in mind, body, and circumstances. The only safe place is an occupation of our seat. It is far above the enemy. We tell him who we are and the Christ within us because we carry the presence of God. He lives within us. Say, I carry the presence. Jesus lives in me. The Holy Spirit lives in me. The Godhead lives in me. See, the Trinity is within us. It's not in a building. It's, it, he lives within us. This, is, this flesh man is the house that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And God wants us to know it and to get such a consciousness and a revelation of it. Because, you know, when you do, you, you want to share Jesus. There's such a love there, you know, what he's done in your life, where he's brought you from, how the power of the word of God, it is Jesus. He is the word made flesh. And Ephesians, let's look at Ephesians uh, 6. <clears throat> We're in Ephesians. Ephesians 6, 11. We'll start at 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You don't hear much about the devil anymore. You know, when I was at school, I heard, I knew there was good and evil, and I knew where evil came from. You don't hear much. The schools don't get it anymore. They don't know it's wrong to lie. They don't know it's wrong to disobey. They don't know anything about honor, because they're not taught it anymore. That's why we saw those babies up here this, this morning, how, how it's an honor to dedicate children to the Lord, to bring them up and to teach them honor and respect, and build character and, and those things within them, not to let the children rule you, but that you train them in love and disciplines of the Lord. 
It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities of powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day and have done all to stand. Stand therefore, having good your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench every fiery dart of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with a perseverance and supplication for all the saints. He's saying we are to constantly remind that we're to have the full armor on. How many every day put the armor on? Just a few. It says there, <clears throat> one, that to the, in verse 14, let's start. Stand therefore having good your waist with truth, a clear understanding of God's word like soldiers when you were in an army. And we often talk about how armies are trained and equipped. We need to be trained and equipped that God's people need to go into the marketplace, whether you're a doctor, whether you're a secretary, a housewife, on a school board, a school teacher, when we're his army out wherever we are. And I always say often, every footstep he, he was with Moses, so is he with us. But we put on the belt of truth, which is the word of God. You know, if you don't, you don't have your belt on and your dax fall down, you're not very covered, are you? <laughs> but it, your belt of truth holds on the rest of the armor. You keep your armor on. It says we, we need to have the belt that holds the rest of the armor in place. And two there, it says in verse uh, 14, having on the breastplate of righteousness. And I've been talking about righteousness. Righteousness means our right standing with God, to stand in the presence of God, free from sin consciousness, guilt, unworthiness, condemnation, inferiority. To stand free from it because those things that hold us from our religious backgrounds, they'll hold you captive that you never grow in the wisdom and the understanding and the revelation of this book. We're not always looking at man. We're looking at the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He speaks to us because the Holy Spirit, the day you gave your heart to Christ, came to live in your human spirit. To be absent from the body is your human spirit to go and be with the Lord. But he lives in it when you give your heart to Christ. He died for all mankind to come into the knowledge of the truth. The Holy Spirit brings under conviction. That's why we're to love people and to share the gospel because we love it. We're passionate about it. Not hit them over the head with it, but to come with the love that Jesus heals today. There's so many sick people out there where his army said, have on the breastplate. Well, the breastplate is the breastplate of righteousness, protects all the main organs. We keep our righteousness on. Our seat, our position is in heavenly places. That's, that's our position of, of authority by faith. And that's why it's important to know his presence and to walk in that who you are. He's given it to us to live here on earth. It's the nature of God within us. And three, the feet in uh, verse 15, let's look. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. A man whose mind has stayed on the word is in perfect peace. That our feet, preparation of the gospel, a faithful ministry and heralding of the word of God, cheering the love of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. We look at our city. There's so many needs out there young people and what they're showing on television and saying some of the, the shows now that they're even young people more or less showing them how to commit suicide. You know, and, and I think we need to be sharing that there is a way because the mind is the battlefield. It's a gateway to the heart. The mind is where the thoughts come. And we need to be sharing the gospel, the good news. It's good news. It's not the bad news. 
It's a way to overcome and to be able to stand. And when you do go through things and family goes through things, you know that you can hang on to the word of God because he's true to his word. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. And we honor him and we lift him up in our lives. He'll bring whatever it is he'll bring you through. Amen? Amen. The shield of faith there in uh, 16, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. The darts are going to come whether they come from somebody else or somebody says something. Or that you might get put down and you may not, not be in the wrong. The darts will come. The enemy will find people to use. God finds people to use. And so we're in a world, you only got to look at the war, a world and what's happening around the world. You know there's an enemy. It's not God doing it. No, there's an enemy out there. A large door, uh, no, um, yeah, a shield of faith is the large door shaped shield covering. The whole body, I always think about, I, my imagination goes back to the Roman shoulders and shoulder, shoul, soldiers. And uh, when they, you see them standing in those uh, pictures of the Roman times and they had the shield right down to the ground and you'd see them arm in arm and they'd stand, nothing could get through. And, and that's how we should see the body of Christ, that we're standing together. No matter what's going on, but we cover one another. We stand together, united. We pray for one another. We lift one another up. Covering the whole body, which indicates his complete refuge under the blood of Calvary, where no power of the enemy can penetrate. In 5, in 6, 17 there also, it says about uh, the helmet of salvation. And uh, the helmet of salvation called elsewhere is the hope of salvation. And I'll just go there, 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. 1 Thessalonians. Um, is it 1 Thessalonians? I'm in two. I need to be in one. Um, it says, and let us who are in the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. You know the helmet covers the mind area. We need to keep that, that on. It's the only one that covers it. It is a remarkable fact that the hope of salvation, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, is the only helmet that seems to be able to protect the head. When we look around us today, there's, there's a battle going on in the area of the mind. It's a battleground. It's the arena of faith. And that's the launching pad for what comes from our life. It's important. Protect the mind with the gospel. It says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Six, there in verse 17, uh, it says, also take up, which is the the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. When you think about all the other areas is protective. The only area that is active is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That's why your words are so important. Your mouth is so important. Your life will be no higher than your mouth. What you put in to the abundance of the heart is what's going to come out of your mouth. What you're thinking on all day, what you're thinking on, that's where your treasure will be. That's what you will be speaking about. The sword of the spirit, which shows the word of God used in an active way. The rest we keep in place to protect. And there in 618, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Let's use that heavenly language. It's our direct line to God. He understands it. Man doesn't. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplications for all the saints. He says, make your requests for the saints. We need to pray for one another. Some people's eyes are so on their self, they're inward all the time. They're not praying for anybody else. That's why I so often say, if you've got sickness, pray for people and healing will come back on you. You've got lack, pray for people to be blessed and blessing will come back on you. The training of the faculties, God would. By constant approach to God, 
in intimacy. That's what we, in our prayer, it's important to have a prayer time. Spend some little time, even 10, 15 minutes. Put it a priority in your life daily. And have intimacy. It's faith that causes prayer to work. Prayer doesn't cause faith to work. And that's why if you look at Jesus' life, it was always in, it was a prayer, spirit, word. They're very inter interwoven. He would go off and pray. Take time in prayer. And when you're looking at prayer, spirit, and word, some people are just all word, well, the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. And when you get into prayer, he'll start to reveal this book to you. He'll give you the wisdom, the understanding. You'll start to have a greater understanding of the cross. You'll start to have a greater understanding of your position of authority. You'll start to understand the, the name and the power and the name of Jesus. But it's the Holy Spirit that wants to reveal it to you in here. He will give you enlightenment and you'll start to see it and you'll start to know it and you'll start to see some things, how powerful it is. We need the armor on to withstand the battles of the enemy. The devil is the accuser of the brethren. And just one more scripture and that's in Revelation 12, 10. Then I heard a voice saying in the heavenlies, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ hath come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives to death. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Is your testimony the word of God? We often hear people like, uh, you know, we last week we had uh, testimonies, uh, particularly in the in the early at uh, second service. There, uh, we had a young man up today giving testimony. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. What you are saying, your words are your testimony of your life. Your words can be negative, or your your words can be saying, "Well, Jesus is my healer. Uh, just stand with me." Agree with me, I'm healed. That's what the brethren do together. We cover one another with the word of our testimony. We say what God says about us. We overcome with the blood of the lamb. We present the blood and it's our covenant with Christ. We take the sword of the spirit. We are all to understand the high calling he has for his people. And you know, uh, on Thursday we were praying for our church and our people and families and we were in the office and once a month at the end of the month we have prayer as leaders we have it every Thursday uh, in the afternoons but once a month we have all day prayer all our ministration our pastors we all come together and we we pray and uh, it was interesting one of the people in that meeting said well I always I see like a big ship a warship and all these little ships around it and I, I said well you know when we have our VLI conference and that's what I see with the churches out in Liberia and India and all the places we do. They're all very apostolic, prophetic, because that's what's on this work, apostolic, prophetic uh, to the city. And uh, I see this big aircraft carrier and, and all these little ships around. And out in those places, we're not just Bible schools, we're, we help in orphanages, uh, we help in the churches, we help farming, we, we help in all different areas. And uh, I said, well, that's what I share with them all, where this aircraft carrier, we go into cities and nations and, and we take back the ground that the enemy robs us from. And that's why God's not gonna do anything, it's his church. He's waiting for us to take hold of this word, to fight the good fight of spirit. And up came in my thoughts was uh, about at home, we, we had about, um, and the word came to me was top guns. And I thought, oh, uh, years ago, because uh, Barry sails and Daniel's here this morning, he sails too. But about 30 years ago, um, some of the, they had American warship in, and uh, in Fremantle, came in off Fremantle, and some of the top guns off the American warship aircraft carrier came to the yacht club. And <clears throat> Barry met the man who trained all these pilots. And so we had 
he was talking to him. And so we invited them while they were here to come to our place and have a barbecue. So all these young men came, and they were awesome young men, very honorable, loved their nation, passionate about their nation. And the, the man that headed up, we come to know quite well. I finished up, we got, I got him born again and spirit filled. And uh, he finished up, I think it was to George Bush becoming, when he retired from the, uh, uh, the, Navy, the Navy, the Air Force, he became the, the pilot in the presidential uh, plane. But all these young guys, and some of them I shared the gospel with also. And then I was training him when they came back a couple of times to get all these young guys um, born again. But he said, you know, the hardest thing was not losing them in war action, but to lose somebody in training. Think about it. So many people, we start to learn and grow in the things of God. And uh, something goes wrong and people move away instead of fulfilling their destiny. And, and they move right away from the things of God, blaming people. No, it's never people. People will push our button, but it's normally us, somewhere in our life, whether it's character. And these young man, men, you know, we got to know them, these um, top guns. And, uh, you know, when they left the city, we lived back then down on the river, and when they left the city, they flew in their planes in front of our house over the river and tipped their wings, really thanking us. And, uh, you know, I never forgot that. And the Lord said, tell my people, they're my top guns. You know why? Because he says in, uh, in, Gal in, uh, in 2 Corinthians 5.20 that we are his ambassadors. It also says in the scriptures that we are a royal priesthood and a chosen generation. Find out who you really are in him the inheritance of sons and daughters. We don't need it when we get home to heaven. You know, there's no, no culture in heaven. There's a kingdom culture. You know, we're a kingdom people, a kingdom mentality. We're not to look at one another here and all the different cultures. There's a kingdom culture here on earth. We're not different cultures, different colors, different backgrounds. We're in him, and he's got something and a part to play for every person in this room. But if you don't find out who you are, and you don't get into him in prayer, and cry out to him and say, Lord, you show me. Holy Spirit, reveal to me. Holy Spirit, teach me. I've been such a mess. I was a mess once. But I had to take this word and train that mind area and see myself as Christ sees me, not how man sees me. You know, get rid of all the rejections and the fears and the hurts and, and those things that would come against or bring shame or guilt or unworthiness. God's given us a way to walk in him here and now, but it's, it's his army in the earth. Not one person could do it. You train to reign. You train to be equipped. And you know what? It's worth it. You think out there, I can't be bothered? Well, get rid of that can't be bothered. And if you're out there and you say, I'm not determined, well, start saying you're determined. I came to a place in my life I was so broken. I was ashamed. I didn't want to walk into a church again. And I heard the preacher that first time I went in there said, if you're not determined, start saying you're determined. If you're not courageous, start saying you're courageous. If you're not bold, start saying you're bold. You say something long enough, it'll be manifested in your flesh. You have a spirit of faith, whether you know it or not. But start to say it. Oh, wash yourself. You talk to the cat, you talk to the car, you talk to the person that drives by it sometimes. You talk to the flowers. You talk to the sky. Start saying what Jesus says about you. And it'll be get manifested in your feelings. It'll get manifested in your emotions. It'll get manifested because you have a spirit of faith. He said there in 2 Corinthians 4, believe, therefore speak. 
and you speak all your fears over you and they get bigger and bigger and they affect your emotions, your feelings, everything else. He said, no, make your requests made known unto me. Cast all your cares on me, for I careth for thee. We're called to bind the unseen forces and to deliver the brethren. And I'm not going, next week I'll go, and he said, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. So it's time we did some binding and loosing. And know to bind the strong man. Pull him down. Pull down those strongholds and imaginations. Bring every thought into captivity. Bind him around the child that's gone wandering off somewhere. Get them loose from them. Bring them into the throne room. Plead the case and then make your requests made known. You'll start to see things happen. Amen. Father, I just thank you for every person here. I thank you for your word. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your presence. Holy Spirit, you touch every person this morning. That word, Father, be sealed in them, who they are. They're top guns, Father, ambassadors for you. They represent you. They represent the King of Kings. They represent their nation. You know, he says in the scriptures, first of all, pray for the leaders of our nation. If we're not doing that, we're disobedient. We need godly leaders in every area of society. We just thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Touch lives this morning. In Jesus' name.